Hey everyone, really just want to take a second and just thank you for tuning back into the channel. And if you're watching the videos and you enjoy them, by all means, hit the like button. It does help out a lot. Let's just jump into it. First up, we got four copies of Lana War Elves. This is like, it's a staple in any green deck, really. If you're running green, you're almost always going to run a Lana War Elves. It is a one drop, one one, and it helps ramp. Four copies. On the right here, we have Pelt Collector. This is a new addition uh, to standard. It is a one drop from Guilds of Ravnica. Elf Warrior, whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, put a plus one plus one counter on Pelt Collector. As long as Pelt Collector has three or more plus one plus one counters on it, it has Trample. Really like to utilize this card. I didn't want to put more than two copies in the deck because I just feel it wouldn't aid the deck out too much considering we do have a lot of low-powered elves on the battlefield. Very low to cast. Druid of the Cowl. We got two drop. Running four of them. Another way to ramp the deck up. We're going to run four copies of them. He's a 1-3. Maybe he's a she. I think she's a she. On the right here, Thorn Lieutenant from M19. It's a two drop Elf Warrior. Whenever Thorn Lieutenant becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, create a 1 1 green Elf Warrior creature token. And then for six, Thorn Lieutenant gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. It's a 2 3. Now, in this current standard, there's just not enough. Uh, there's, there's not enough ways for Elves to go wide in the current standard. And um, you're, you're going to see there's some cards you might have thought, well, why wasn't this card in there? And uh, it, it, they just can't go that wide. It's just not available in the current standard right now. Uh, but we're going to run four copies of Thorn Lieutenant. Really a great card, especially when we get uh, to the point where we can use that six mana ability. Thorn Lieutenant gets plus four, plus four, and so on. It turns really neat. And uh, it creates a, a nice threat uh, on the battlefield. Elvish Clan Caller, really, really cool card. I really personally enjoy this card. It's a two drop, and it's a it's a lord. It's a way also to tutor up more of these lords. Other elves you control get plus one, plus one. And then for six, we tap it, and we search our library for another copy of Elvish Clan Caller. And we put it right onto the battlefield and then shuffle our library, which is pretty cool. It's going to pump up our elves. So ideally, we'd like to get to our Elvish Clan Callers uh, as quickly as possible. If we can get two of them out, you know, within the first, you know, three, four turns, that's amazing. Uh, we will definitely have a nice threat out there. Or wait for the ideal time, because we don't want to just drop an Elvish Clan Caller and have it be removed. That would really be a bummer. On the right here, we have Swarm Guild Mage. New Guilds of Ravnica card. Uh, I really liked uh, the Guild Mages, and this one's no exception. It's a two drop for a swamp and a forest. The deuce deuce for five we tap it creatures we control get plus one plus zero and gain menace until end of turn now because we're going to have a lot of elves out not a ridiculous amount but quite a bit of elves out giving our elves menace is going to be a nice little combat trick uh, it's going to make it so they can't block everything for deuce tap it you gain two life Really, really cool card. I was thinking about going four. I was thinking about going two, but I settled on three. Um, two, I think, would be too few in the deck because it is a deuce deuce and it can easily be removed. And that's, I think, the way that we can just spend mana later in the game just to do something. That this is, and it was like a must have for Swarm Guild Mage to be in this deck. It's a nice mana sink. Steel Leaf Champion. Yeah, I did not go four. I know. Call me crazy. I went three on the Steel Leaf. It's a great card, but I wanted I wanted some availability in another slot. Steel Leaf Champion's a three drop. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less, which is really going to be cool with all the tokens that are going to be coming out. Five four. Marwin the Nurturer, on the other hand, is. A three drop as well, uh, but we're only running two copies. Legendary creature, Elf Druid. Whenever another elf enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Marwin the Nurturer. And then tap it, add an amount of, uh, of green mana equal to Marwin's power. 
one one this card's pretty cool because it can get big and it can get big and we can utilize that mana um, especially with our guild mage out there so two copies of it beast whisperer four drop really essential to the deck the goal of this deck is just to get to a bunch of cards rather quickly and we're going to need to have to draw them in order to do so so whenever you cast a creature spell draw a card it is a four drop though and it's only a two three but whenever we do cast, we have a lot of creature spells in the deck. Whenever we do cast one, we're going to draw a card. That's phenomenal, especially because a lot of our elves um, require a lower casting cost. So it's going to really help out and aid the deck. Four copies, a must. Not three, not two. We're going four. Underrealm Liquor. It's a five drop. Zombie Elf Shaman pretty neat card if you would draw a card instead to look at the top three cards of your library then put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard i like that because we we want to basically get to the stronger elves you know we don't want to just sit around and just draw a card. oh look now we're, we're stuck with alana or elf what are we going to do with this but this way we're allowed to look at the top three cards of our library which is pretty neat and we can choose the best of those three. Maybe, you know, we're, it's already late in the game if we're casting uh, the Underrealm. So mana shouldn't be a problem. Lands we should have out already in order to cast whatever. So we want to grab something a little more beefy. Something that's really going to help out the deck. Even a Beast Whisperer. Uh, pay for life. Underrealm gains indestructible until end of turn and tap it. There's a tiny bit of life gain with the Guild Mage. So they, that we're going to pay for life, it may not be that bad. It's not going to hurt us as much. Uh, if we didn't have the Guild Mage in here, this card might be a little tough to, to utilize. Two copies of it, it's a 4-3. Pretty cool card. Only one gruesome menagerie? Sure. It's a 5-drop. Sorcery. Choose a creature card with converted mana cost 1 in your graveyard. Then do the same for creature cards with converted mana cost 2 and 3. Return those cards to the battlefield. I threw one in here. I really like that because we are going to be dumping into our graveyard a little bit um, with the card, uh, with the liquor before. So this, I think, is, is going to be nice just to come out and just drop a 1, 2, and 3 mana cost creature. Pretty nasty. Definitely had to include one of them. I really like this card. And yeah, it, it may not be the greatest uh, you know, fit in this deck, but it definitely is going to get more creatures back onto the battlefield. One copy of it. Assassin's Trophy, how could we not? We are running green-black after all. We are going to run four copies of Assassin's Trophy. As we all know, this is the probably one of the most powerful cards, uh, powerful removal cards we've seen in a very long time, if not the most powerful card. Destroy target permanent. That's that goes for anything on the battlefield, um, or any anything out, <laughs> anything anywhere out. Um, other than emblems, it just doesn't get rid of an emblem. Nothing does yet. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle their library. Really not too concerned about that little land there. If we can take out a planeswalker with this, that's phenomenal. I mean, just just the an enchantment. I mean, you name it. Assassin's Trophy's got it. It's going to take care of it. So, four copies of Assassin's Trophy. I think it's time for sideboard. Nope, not yet. Land base. Woodland Cemetery. I'm going to run four copies from good old Dominaria. Uh, it enters the battlefield tap unless we control a swamp or a forest. We'll for sure have a swamp or a forest out. Great card. Dual lands are a must when you're running two colors. Overgrown Tomb, uh, Tome, sorry, uh, Swamp Forest Land, of course, yet again. As Overgrown Tome enters the battlefield, you may pay two life. If you don't, enters the battlefield tapped. Two life's really not going to hurt us if we need to get um, our Guild Mage out or whatever the case may be, turn two. Uh, this is, this is going to help. We're going to need to pay that two life just to do it. Four copies of it. Evolving Wilds. Four copies of Evolving Wilds. I mean, this card's been printed so many times, it's ridiculous. Sacrifice it, and then we can search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle our library. Pretty neat card. 
four copies of it to get to the mana we need. Three swamps. Just three, not four, not two. We got three swamps. Eight forests. Total of eight forests. I am debating, though. I could go nine forests and go two swamps, but I decided to go three swamps, eight forests. That is the entirety of the deck. Now let's get into the sideboard. Poison Tip Archer. It's a four drop. We're going to run two of them. Let's say our opponent is running basically uh, anything flying. Uh, this sucker has reach. And death touch. So it can kill any of them big dragons out there or angels that are, that are just brutal. Uh, whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. Now, because we're not going crazy wide with elves, that's why this is in the sideboard and not in the main deck. Um, I mean, we can really use the whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. That would, that would go great in like a token generating deck because it's any creature, um, which, is, which is huge. It's a 2-3. Reclamation Sage, because we are definitely going to need to destroy artifacts or enchantments at some point. Four copies, the max. Uh, it's a 3-drop and a 2-1 Elf Shaman. Status and statue. On the first side, we got target creature gets plus one, plus one against death touch until end of turn. Maybe we're just running into issues uh, where we need to kill something. <laughs> we really, really need to take something out, and this will help out uh, when it comes to uh, blocking. Uh, and it, it's an instant, nice little trickery. Plus it gets plus one, plus one. Maybe we'll still we'll survive that with our card. Statue over here. It's a four. Destroy target artifact, creature, or enchantment. Very versatile. I like that. We can take out any one of those three. And that could be huge. We're running two copies of this. Frasca's content because people love to run Planeswalkers right now. When, especially when you got Tefiri running in the uh, in standard. Uh, he's very dangerous. And he gets, uh, he gets the job done quick. So we are probably going to need to get rid of that Planeswalker. Along with your Karns, you know, and even Vraska now is going to be a threat. Um, and then we gain two life. Not bad. Three copies. Silent Gravestone. Three of them. Artifact. Cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. I, I know I know what you're thinking, but Joey Moss, you already have cards that are going to try to target stuff in graveyards. This is true, Bill. But uh, we, we, we really are going to be threatened uh, by decks that are all about the graveyard. And if we're able just to take away their entire graveyard, the rest of our deck can, can hold up on its own. But if they can't use their graveyard the way they want to, they're flat out just going to lose the game. I mean, that, that's pretty basic. So that's why this is in the, the, the sideboard and we're running three of them. And then for four, Exile, Silent, Gravestone, and all cards from all graveyards, draw a card. Pretty, pretty neat. Ulcron Assassin. You know, I, I really wanted to include uh, a playset in the main. I really did. But because we're not going to be pumping up our elves too, too big, you know, like this deck doesn't consist of things that give our creatures plus four, plus four, plus three, plus three, you know, or anything like that. I, I, and I just really wanted to talk about this card. That's why I included it here in the end of the sideboard. This card's nasty. In the right deck, I did not feel, again, this was the right deck for him. He's an elf assassin, death touch. All creatures able to block Okron assassin do so. I mean, you pump this thing up and make it a 4-4, or even like give it some auras or whatnot, and then you attack. For each creature they're blocking with, let's say they have four creatures out, all right? All four have to block this thing. If you have this thing a 4-4, if the assassin's a 4-4. You can just deal one damage to each of those creatures and they all die. That's why Okron is such a nasty card. But again, uh, hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe even throw in two copies in the main with this thing. I mean, you can even change this deck up a tiny bit. Maybe Okron would serve better in the main board. I wouldn't get too carried away because it's not a pump up kind of deck. So maybe one or two copies in the main. Also, if you guys are still watching this, uh, I, I got to ask you, there's a video here. Uh, it's a real or fake. It's my first appearance I'm making on a, a channel called Ghost Static. Um, I've been collaborating with uh, one of my friends, Adamo, 
who's uh, the main guy on Ghost Static. Very talented individual. And you will see me make several appearances uh, where we go around uh, exploring and, and, and hunting for ghosts, basically, all throughout Ohio. Um, the video that's down here below, this is just uh, a, a, a real or fake video. Pretty exciting, though. Uh, I'd like to know your opinions on it. Give me some feedback. By all means, check out the video. Uh, you know, it does mean a lot. Halloween's approaching, and we thought, what better time than to drop all this uh, during Halloween season? And it will be a very active channel. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. Oh, yeah, also, subscribe to it if you're into the ghost kind of stuff. And let me know your thoughts on this deck. I do appreciate you tuning in to Bad Boy Gaming today. I'm Joey Moss, PLA.